Hi everyone, welcome back to learn and build web application using ASP.NET MVC and Code First Entity Framework video series. This is a lab 2 uh, video uh, section 2. So in lab 2 video section 1 we have seen uh, MVC architecture, what is model view and controller. In lab 2 section 2 video that is in this video we are going to see uh, I am going to explain uh, MVC request lifecycle and also ASP.NET MVC routing mechanism okay, with a uh, small demo. Okay, so, so far we have seen all these concepts. Now let's uh, see ASP.NET MVC initial request lifecycle. Okay, so this is, uh, uh, so I am talking about uh, ASP.NET MVC initial request lifecycle. Okay, uh, so now let me run the application from the start and see how uh, the process uh, will take place okay so when i run the application you can see first it gonna come to, uh, it gonna come to global.acx page okay so it it first comes to it it's to the global.acx.cs page here uh, uh, there is one method called as application start method so first it comes to this uh, method uh, which is uh, which which is application start method and here there are many configuration files which is present okay so it's gonna register all the areas and uh, this uh, config file uh, uh, is for uh, routing mechanisms if uh, if we would have used a web api temp uh, web api and filter configs uh, so this uh, gonna uh, had all the global filters okay so it's gonna register all the global filters and uh, uh, this is for uh, register routing mechanism it contains all the routing mechanism so uh, here is the one uh, where uh, actual uh, routing takes place so it passes the url and uh, con uh, converts it into a particular controller and action method and then uh, this uh, this is uh, also doing uh, like a register bundle so here uh, it contains a set of uh, javascript and css files uh, where uh, bundling and minification concepts uh, if we are using then uh, we can uh, use it over here and then finally register authentication okay so authentication this is for authentication so basically uh, whenever uh, the web application first starts run uh, so first it comes to the global.asx page as we seen here and here uh, inside it will come uh, inside the application start method and here there are uh, mainly uh, you can see the there are uh, config files present and it will execute it will register all these config files which is also present in app start uh, folder you can see this all this uh, uh, for all the five configuration files is uh, present in this app start uh, uh, folder okay so it's going to execute uh, all this uh, uh, configuration files and after executing this uh, uh, actually uh, using this routing mechanisms uh, the url uh, will be mapped into a particular controller and action method okay so now it will it will be moving on to the particular controller and action method so here you can see the it uh, since we have uh, this is the initial uh, request life cycle so by default it gonna take uh, the controller and action method which is uh, defined in the routing uh, table so it's going to return view that is uh, index view it's going to return index view so here you can also see that uh, after uh, returning to the view it also comes to view start dot cshtml okay so in this uh, view start dot cshtml uh, we can dynamically uh, if if there are uh, multiple layout or uh, master pages is uh, present over here so here we can dynamically uh, uh, we, we can provide the layout or master page we can select the master page based on the certain conditions okay so finally you can see uh, the layout page and uh, it will render all the child pages over here okay so finally the index page is been shown to us okay so this is the sp.net mvc initial request lifecycle you can see here uh, so let me uh, tell you again uh, with an example so whenever a uh, user uh, sends uh, user runs application say that is uh, via url 
okay so what uh, it does is it sends a request to global.asx page and global.asx page uh, uh, inside it uh, uh, it uh, uses uh, it passes the url via routing model uh, that is a url routing module uh, so it finds a particular controller uh, and action method name and mvc calls uh, this uh, particular controller uh, class and action method name and then uh, action method can return a view or string string or partial uh, or partial view etc so uh, once uh, called to uh, call to the view uh, if action method returns view then it returns a rendered HTML view. Then uh, finally, response uh, will be back to the browser by moving to the specific page. Okay, so this is about the SP.NET MVC initial request lifecycle. Okay, now uh, let's move on to the next topic that is uh, SP.NET MVC routing. Okay, so this as in this SP.NET MVC routing, uh, uh, as we seen uh, in global.asx page. Uh, it got registered in the global.asx page okay so here you can see that uh, register routes which is present uh, here so which is present in app uh, folder root config.cs page okay so this is the sp.net mvc routing uh, mechanism which is handled over here okay so what it uh, actually does is uh, it maps the incoming browser request to the particular controller and action method and uh, actually this uh, sp.net routing uh, makes use of a routing table uh, which will be uh, getting generated uh, when uh, uh, your web application first starts uh, present in the which will be present in the global uh, asx page okay Apart from this, uh, in ASP.NET MVC routing, uh, we can also define our uh, own custom routing. Okay, so here, if you can see here, uh, we have specified certain pattern. Okay, so there is a controller slash action slash ID. If you want to modify this uh, convention, like if there should be, if you want to, uh, if you you want first action method uh, action method name to be first, and then controller name. So here uh, we can uh, define our own custom uh, uh, custom uh, custom routing over here. Okay. So this is uh, here also we have given uh, see by, by default if uh, there is no controller or action method which is specified in the URL, then by default it goes to uh, home controller and uh, uh, index action method. And also here you can see ID which is uh, URL parameter dot optional. Okay. So this is about uh, HSP.NET routing mechanism okay uh, and uh, this uh, you can see uh, some of the things which i uh, have explained like a uh, unique name okay uh, which uh, specifies a, a specific reference to a given route so the, the this is the unique name default is a unique name which we have provided for this and uh, url pattern which helps the parser uh, to break down the url into a particular controller and action method as i said uh, this this is the url uh, pattern okay uh, we can specify our own convention if we want uh, uh, if we want to follow action slash controller we can modify over there or uh, define our own custom uh, mvc routing and uh, defaults uh, an optional set of uh, default values and constraints we can also pro uh, provide certain constraints a set of constraints can be applied to this url pattern example optional parameter passed uh, should be int or string so this is the optional parameter which uh, we are uh, passing uh, along with a controller and action method uh, so uh, we can uh, uh, provide certain con uh, constraints to that uh, like uh, the parameter pass should be in string okay so this is about uh, sp.net mvc routing mechanism and uh, so this is about uh, lab 2 video uh, i hope uh, you enjoyed watching this video please do subscribe to my channel for watching more videos thank you